Hello there, um, my name is Nate Nunez and this is my science fair demonstration on how a tin can Stirling engine works. So uh, first I'll show you guys a couple examples of what a tin can Stirling engine is, then explain to you how it's made and how it works um, with some physics principles. Okay, so uh, here's the first video, this is my Stirling engine that I built um, this fall for an AP Physics project at SI. Um, notice the speed of how quickly um, the flywheel, the CD, is spinning and that there is a counterweight attached to the CD to balance out the system. This is another video another Stirling engine. You'll notice that they're not all um, of the same speed. This one was made by Megan McCarthy, a former SI student, and you'll notice that it's rotating at a slower speed. And finally, here is a much faster Stirling engine. Um, these two Sterling engines were made by college students and they're pretty efficient engines. You'll notice how quickly they spin. So yeah, you'll notice that they're all basically made um, with a similar frame, similar parts, and now I'll get into that and how, it, how they're made. Um, here's a web page um, from Stephen F. Austin State University which describes the project and how to construct one from scratch. Um, there is a parts list here involving diet shake tin cans, aluminum cans, epoxy, um, a small balloon. Many of these items can be found at um, local hardware stores. Um, they also provide for you these templates which proved to be very helpful for me. You cut these out and you make um, each part, including a ring stand, pressure vessel, and the displacer. And these templates really make the project flow smoothly, ensuring that each part is of the correct size. The most difficult part to uh, create for me and for most students proved to be the crankshaft as you had to bend a, uh, a metal hanger into this shape here and fit it into these crankshaft supports which were attached to the side of the Stirling engine. So that's more about the construction. It requires a lot of hard work and a lot of metal work, but once you construct the Stirling engine it proves to be a rewarding experience. Where did I go? Here we go. Um, these are some more pictures on what types of uh, parts you will need to construct one. The hardest part to construct proved to be the displacer. It has to be airtight in order to displace air in the Stirling engine. And that'll transition into how the Stirling engine works. The most important part of the Stirling engine is the displacer, located right here. It displaces air from the top of the pressure vessel to the bottom. The air at the top is at a colder temperature than the air at the bottom and this temperature differential is what makes the engine a heat engine and how it works. The hot air is channeled through this PVC pipe into this balloon which as it inflates turns the crankshaft. This crankshaft spins the flywheel, the CD, and in turn lifts the displacer causing this cycle um, of an effect. And that's basically, in a few words, how the engine works. It relies on a few simple thermodynamics concepts, including heat and pressure. And hopefully you'll have a better understanding um, of how thermodynamics works in physics after completing the project. Personally, I found it was a helpful project to do, useful in understanding basic thermodynamics principles. So that concludes my science fair. A demonstration on how a tin can Stirling engine works. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks.